Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Alaska. The last frontier is a state known for ice and snow, cold weather, beautiful mountains, forests, fjords, and lakes, as well as wildlife like bears, moose, and caribou. America's largest state has some of the most spectacular wilderness areas in the country, but it's also home to some places you might not expect. Vast stretches of sand dunes, at times over 100 miles inland, loom over the green forests and lush valleys of the northwestern part of the state, two opposing landscapes, stitched together seemingly at random. So how did these desert-like areas of sand wind up nestled among the state's vast and lush boreal forests? It's one of many geographic features across the United States and the world that stand out in stark contrast from their surrounding areas. In this video, I'll be taking you through a few geographic features in the US that seem out of place compared to their surroundings, as well as parts of states that are very different from the perceptions people have about them. Hello and welcome to That Is Interesting. I'm your host, Carter. Today, more geographic anomalies of the United States. This video is part of a series on out of place geography. I have four more that are already up, three in the US and one with an international focus, so make sure to give them a watch, and if you have more ideas of places both in the US and around the world to include, please leave a comment and let me know, because I certainly will be making more. If you're trying to start a blog, a newsletter, an online business, having a nice professional looking website will give you a lot of credibility. Today's sponsor, Squarespace, makes creating your own website easy and simple. Recently, I've been working on building my own website to complement this channel, and Squarespace has been super user-friendly and honestly a really fun experience. In this day and age, having your own website can be really useful. Anything from starting your own small business, looking to raise money for a cause that's important to you, or documenting your travels will be made so much easier with a website, and with Squarespace, you can build your own website with your own domain that looks personalized and professional. Do you want to teach an online course? Their member areas feature allows you to earn extra income doing just that. Want to send emails directly to your customers? Start your own blog? Collect donations? All that and more is easily doable with Squarespace, and you can link it to your other social media sites as well as use their great analytics tools to see how much traffic your site is getting. The best part is, I've got a special deal on Squarespace just for you. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, Go to squarespace.com slash that is interesting to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using code that is interesting. Alaska is home to three major dune fields as well as a number of smaller ones. The Great Kobuk and Little Kobuk sand dunes are about 10 miles away from one another in Kobuk Valley National Park in the northwestern part of the state. And the Nogahabara dunes, sorry if I mispronounced that, I couldn't find any pronunciations on it, are about 100 miles to the south. All in all, they take up 46 square miles of land and often are quite tall, towering over the trees beneath them. The enormous expanses of sand stand out largely because of their location. They sit within the Arctic. In some areas, groves of pine forests are surrounded or partially buried by sand, the tips of the trees jutting out of the dunes. In others, the trees are moving back, forest pushing its way into the sand. In the Great Kobuk Sand Dunes, a river divides the dune field in half, slicing down the middle and creating a break in the desert-like landscape. Each of the dune fields are active, the sand moving and shifting, slowly migrating across the region. The dunes take up about 16,000 acres, but are all that remains of a much larger series of sand deposits across Alaska. 200,000 acres of ancient dunes have mostly been transformed into plant and tree-covered sandy soil. Like many of the world's strangest geographic anomalies, the dunes were formed due to glaciation. As ancient glaciers grew and then receded, they crushed parts of the mountainous landscape they passed over, leaving behind smaller rocks in their wake. Strong winds then blew the rocks into one another, pulverizing them further into sand and leaving behind these incredible fields of sand dunes. The Kobuk Dunes were a large part of the reason that Kobuk Valley was made into a national park, and today, largely due to the remoteness of the park, it's the third least visited national park in the country, getting only 16,000 visitors a year. In comparison, the most visited national park, Great Smoky Mountains, gets nearly 13 million visitors annually. The Great Kobuk Sand Dunes are the largest dunes in the Arctic, but they aren't the only ones. Canada is home to a number of enormous dune fields, such as Saskatchewan's Athabasca Dunes. In Alaska's neighbor, Yukon, exists a similar phenomenon, a field of sand jutting out among the mountains, forests, and lakes. 
The Karkaros Desert is often called the smallest desert in the world, but it isn't actually a desert. Instead, it's a dune field like those in Alaska. Karkaros was also formed thanks to glaciers, but through a different process. Nearby glaciers had fed a lake called Watson Lake and deposited sand at the bottom of the lake. When the glaciers receded, the lake, missing its water source, dried up and the sand at the bottom was all that remained. New York is filled with islands, but Pine Island isn't one of them. The town, about two hours northwest of New York City and just across the border from New Jersey, is elevated slightly from the flat land around it, sitting on a very slight hill. The small valley it sits in is home to a number of other such hills, all called islands, that spring up from an otherwise pancake flat valley floor. It's an unusual area of completely flat land right in the middle of the Appalachians, most of the area around it home to small mountains and rolling hills. But Pine Island, as with all the other seemingly random hills in the valley, has its name because it was once an island. The flat valley it sits on was a shallow, swampy lake that flooded frequently, giving the region a pretty cool name, the Drowned Lands. The bog, fed and drained by the Walkill River, a tributary of the Hudson, was formed by glaciers, and for thousands of years, as plants grew and died in the swamp, it built up a rich layer of soil below the surface, stretching 30 feet deep. In the 1800s, immigrants moved to farm the land from Europe, mostly Polish, Dutch, and Germans from Russia. Today, there's still a major Polish-American population in the region. The farmers wanted to drain the lake to use the lake bed for farmland, whereas mill workers further downstream on the Wallkill wanted to preserve, even dam it, to raise the water level so mills could be constructed. This led to a long-running dispute that lasted several decades. Dams were built and destroyed, the pro-milling dam builders were nicknamed beavers, and the pro-draining farmers who destroyed the dams were nicknamed muskrats, making the whole thing known as the Muskrat and Beaver War. Eventually, the muskrats won out and drained the drowned lands, exposing the rich soil that lay underneath. The decaying swamp plants that had formed it filled the soil with nitrogen and sulfur, and it's considered some of the most fertile soil on earth. The drowned lands became known as the black dirt region, as the soil is very dark, so much so that you can actually clearly make out where the lake used to be on a satellite image of the area, as the soil distinctly changes color. It became a major center of onion farming. The sulfur and nitrogen give the onions that grow there a lot of flavor, and it's even home to an onion festival every year. Driving across South Dakota, the landscape is flat prairie and farmland for much of the state, until all of a sudden, the grass-covered plains give way to an otherworldly landscape. Wide white scars slice in the face of the earth, a region visible from space and stretching nearly a hundred miles. These are the Badlands. They're a type of formation that exists all over the world. Neighboring states like North Dakota, Montana, and Wyoming have them too, but South Dakota's preserved as Badlands National Park are some of the most stunning. 80 million years ago, this part of the continent was underwater. The floors of this inland sea left sediments that turned into a vast layer of shale, called the Pier Shale, after the sea dried up. Runoff from the nearby Black Hills, a geographic anomaly in their own right, as well as ash from volcanic eruptions in Utah and Nevada, left other layers on top of the shale, giving it the red, pink, and white layers you can find there today. Each of these layers was made of soft material, usually ash and sediment, and because of that, the landscape has eroded very quickly, and is continuing to do so, at about an inch per year, which is, for example, 10,000 times faster than erosion occurs in the Black Hills. This erosion has left behind these stunning canyons and ravines, that make up one of the strangest and most fascinating landscapes in the country. There are plenty more examples of regions in the United States that are geographically out of place from the areas around them. This is the fifth video I've done on this topic and the fourth about the US. If you enjoyed this series as much as I enjoyed making it, please leave comments below suggesting out of place geographic features in the US or around the world that you'd like to see in future videos, because I definitely plan to make more. Also, Badlands and Kobuk Valley are both national parks. I put up a community post a few months ago asking if you'd like to see a series about the national parks in the US, and the answer was an overwhelming yes. I'll probably start making some videos in that series soon, so keep an eye out. If you enjoyed this out-of-place geography series, I think it'll be right up your alley. 
I want to give a big thank you to everyone who has already joined my Patreon. Through it you can access different things such as behind the scenes videos, early access to maps I create, an exclusive Discord Q&A with me, ad free content, and shoutouts to my videos. Please be sure to check out the TII store, where you'll be able to purchase all sorts of official That Is Interesting products and merchandise, including shirts, hoodies, embroidered beanies, masks, mugs, embroidered backpacks, laptop stickers and sleeves, and so on. I really appreciate the over 900 of you who have already joined my Discord server. If you haven't joined the Discord server yet, it's a great place to continue conversations about the topics discussed in these videos, interact with fellow viewers, and help provide information and suggestions for future videos. It's a great community and we do fun stuff like geography game nights, live podcasts, and so on. I'll put links to both the Patreon and the Discord in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you learned something new. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover the countries, cities, people, and places of the world and beyond. These videos will leave you saying, that is interesting.